This is my gaming rig. I built it from 27 peak dashes. This is no longer a problem for me, because I can earn while I wait. These are not just skills for the squad, but navigating the ultimate drop zone.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Central Arkansas versus North Dakota State, two teams that are brand new to season number two. Um, two very young coaching staffs when it comes to the RFCL, but we're going to see what these two teams can pull out together tonight. Uh, we are going to start. I'm going to go live with Coach Kernsey first. This man is uh, he's by himself tonight, so uh, we'll see what they are able, what he is able to do. Uh, to pull out so let's go ahead and go live with coach Kernsey and uh, see what his thoughts are on tonight's game all right coach Kernsey looks like you are uh, alone tonight my friend yes sir win or lose it's gonna be all on me do you like that do you like not having your coordinators with you do you like kind of having full control or would you much rather have somebody in your ear kind of you telling you uh, you know play call I guess um, honestly, I've been playing this game for 20 plus years now, and most of the time it's been by myself. So I'm comfortable this way, and probably more comfortable than having coordinators. So we'll see how it goes. Got you. Well, you're going up against a UCA team that's been very, I'll say, hit or miss at the quarterback position. Uh, Parker Howell is he's really good some games, some days he's not. You don't really know what you're going to get with him. Uh, what's your game plan been like for this week, and uh, what's the just the game plan in general for how to come out with a victory? Yeah, Cappy's come up with a good game plan for the week uh, for defense. Uh, we'll try to contain their two-headed monster in the backfield and uh, go from there on defense. On offense, we just got to get better passing the ball. We've got to get more consistent. We've got to score some points, and uh, we'll see if that happens this week. All right, well, best of luck, and I will talk to you at halftime. Thank you, sir. All right, Coach Bucky. Uh, What's up, Gage? Coach Pete. How are you? How's it going, my friends? It's going it's pretty cold. good. We're we're excited for this game. Yeah, you're going up against a North Dakota State team that has had one game under Coach Kernsey's uh, reign. So you don't have as much film to go off of as some of these other teams that have played three or four games with the same staff. But what's the game plan have been like for this week? Well, we only had that one game to look at versus UCO, which they played great against. So, I mean, the game plan, we're, we're, we're going to try and run it with Redmond. If we start out the game, if it doesn't work, try and run some options with Parker, trying to get him comfortable with the in, the in the game and then see what we could do from there, maybe pass it a little bit. But it's all, it's all just about how comfortable we could get Parker. And if he could get comfortable, I feel like we have a good shot of uh, winning the game. Absolutely. And Coach Pete, question for you, my friend. At this point in the season, you are one and two. Uh, you're one and one in the division. What's the uh, the mindset going forward to trying to make a playoff run? I mean, we we know how big this game is. Uh, we have, we have a lot riding on this game. Uh, I mean, if we win this one, we're we're gonna keep pushing forward and, and try to hopefully not only clinch the playoffs but prove that we are supposed to be in playoffs. And uh, we're just gonna keep them underdog mentality and and, and push through. All righty. Well, best of luck to you guys uh, during this game, and uh, I'll talk to you all at the half. All right. See you, guys. All right. So these guys are going to get ready for kickoff here. As mentioned, UCA is 1-2. and two. North Dakota State are 0-3. Both of these teams are in the Western Division. Uh, North Dakota State has a non-conference game next week against Coastal Carolina. So um, they really need to get a victory tonight and uh, finish up conference play very strong before they head over to non-con with a cross-division matchup. Following tonight's game, we do have UCO versus uh, Montana coming up. Coach Jet making his uh, head coaching debut as Coach Blake has stepped down from the RFCL due to uh, he says work and other stuff, but we all know he just couldn't handle the pressure of being 0-3. Twenty-four to twenty-one tight end flex has been stolen. It's very similar to our ace twenty tight end. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm I'm I'll be honest. I'm adding the uh, ace tot just to give me an under center variation of tie slots so uh uh adapt or die i guess is the uh the wording here 
I'm probably going to leave these two coaches up on camera all night tonight, uh, both in their respective corners are the only two coaches we have on camera, so I figured why not, you know? Hey, for the record, I saw North Dakota State return a kickoff for a touchdown. Uh, it was against the CPU the other day. Coach Kernsey was doing some labbing on my computer with his roster and playbook. Um, he did return a kick for a touchdown. It was called back due to holding or blocking the back or something, but uh, it did happen. I'm just waiting until it happens in a actual RFCO game. Nonetheless, North Coast State going to start off under center with a red run to the right side, Greg Cooper. Going to get a massive gain of zero yards. And we are underway in Arkansas. I want to know everybody's thoughts on this field for UCA. I personally love it. I'd love to know what everybody else thinks about it. You know, that's a good question. It looks like it's not Vince Young. It's not Vince Young III. I don't know the other guy's name off the top of my head. I really desperately need to get caught up on stats as well. Cooper going to run up the middle 10 yards this time. Just kind of bulldozing his way over that one defender to pick up 10 on the ground. So those of you that did not watch last week, um, you North Coast State kind of went with a two-quarterback system. They had a P5 transfer. I believe it is uh, Ty Thompson transfer in, not his actual name, but his player. Um, and then, obviously, they signed the five-star quarterback, Vince Young the third. Finney's going to come in motion to the backfield. We're going to see a handoff to Cooper around the left side. He's going to be hit hard at the line of scrimmage and uh, going to be dropped there. Bucky and Monarch will be on the call for the next game. UCO and Montana. We got a two by two set. Now, shotgun formation, screen pass is going to be the Cooper. And he's going to throw it to the receiver over on the right. Mark Shelton, his first pass of the day, going to fall incomplete. Now, third and 10. Shelton going to be back to pass the one off his back foot. That ball is going to fall incomplete. King Jadora credited with, uh, I believe, the hurry there. And now North Coast State's going to be looking at a fourth and ten, and surely they're not going to go for it, right? Is Currency really going to go for it on fourth and ten? From his own territory? He don't have special teams. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. Hang on a second. Hey, Kernsey. Yeah. I, it's just a glitch. Um, we're just going to have to restart the game. Uh, I'll tell them to make sure you get the ball, just run it, like all three plays with two clock on, and then just punt it on fourth down. Okay. Or just – I I don't want to say take knees. Just do, like, halfback dive every play, and I'll tell them to, like, call a goal line so that hopefully you don't pick up a first down or anything. But I also don't want you to lose, like, momentum with just taking a knee and stuff. So. Okay. All right. Why is it? Wait, what's happening? They he uh, they're gonna have to put the ball back. Like if they get it first, they're gonna have to wait, put it. Gage is in here. Wait, what? What's happening, Gage? Uh, you're gonna have to restart the game. He don't have special teams. Uh, in his playbook, okay. it's just glitch. So um, oh, restart. Yeah. Make him get the ball. Um, and then he's just gonna run like halfback dive every play. Um, oh, uh, by the way, uh, we deferred. We deferred. So I think we. Yeah, he, they're getting the ball. They're getting the ball. Which yeah. yeah, just do, do the same. So what's going to happen is the same thing is just going to happen, and they're just going to punt it to us, right? Yeah, yeah he's just going to run. 
Yeah. We could you sneak your echoing so bad. Age, real quick. Uh, special teams, you could easily fix that. You actually have to go to the. Uh... We already restarted the game. Well, I, I see that now. Uh oh. <laughs> How do you fix it though? Yeah. But so basically, if it does that again, how you uh, end up picking the special teams play, you actually have to go to like play type and then go over to special teams. Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, appreciate oh, it. So it, it, ha it happened to us too. Yeah, I remember it happened earlier this year, but he is just going to run like halfback dive, just call goal line. Yeah, so we're like, still getting the ball. Yeah, don't like run commit or nothing, but just call goal line. He's going to run, Got it. do three and out, then on fourth down, he'll punt it to you. All right, First cool. Week. All right, so a uh, uh, little hiccup there. But it is what it is. All right, now we are back as if nothing ever happened. Quit complaining about the music, or you will be timed out per Gerald. That's just what you told me. Look, the music was playing because uh, we were just waiting on the game, and I wasn't going to commentate over nothing for a minute and a half. So, if you want to complain, complain to Gerald, okay? He told me to do it. You're pretty bad, okay? I don't know if he meant to take a uh, play a game there. Maybe he did. Thank you, Ryan. At least somebody has a great taste in music here. So North Dakota State's going to punt this one away. UCA has a good chance to make a great return here. He's going to take it out to about the 41-yard line, Mitch Strout. And UCA 
We'll get started in really, really good field position. Zell, what's up, my man? Thank you for stopping by. Up to 17 here. We recently hit 400 subscribers on the channel. Did that uh, yesterday, I think. Those of you that are interested, uh, we do have a coach mode user online dynasty taking place. It is myself, Pars, Gerald, Sneak, Monarch, and Coach Orf from uh, Georgetown. So we have six RFCL coaches all going head to head against each other in an online dynasty. Uh, you need to check that out. The Detroit video is up. Uh, I think Tulsa comes up tomorrow. Um, who else is it? Sneak, 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 sneak. Who is Sneak? Army, Army comes out uh, later this week. Yeah, the uh, the list is public now, Zell. It's because of the Troy's video out, and I covered everybody that was in it in that. So uh, we got two more videos. One coming out tomorrow, another video coming out Saturday or Sunday. So be sure to check that out. But on second and five, we got two by two set. Redmond alongside Howe in the backfield. He's going to hand off to Redmond up the middle. He's got a big hole, and had he kept between the hashes, he may have scored Hunter Redmond and burst of speed 12 yards there. Turn your hippie disc. No. Had not touched any of my settings. I need, let me, I can try to cut game audio on for y'all. Um, I don't know what it's linked to. It wouldn't be speakers. didn't work like I said I have no clue what my audio goes to at all yeah so I don't know no nah, my, my audio is messed up like I can't even hear it in my headset because I have it to where y'all can actually hear it instead like anybody that's on my computer can hear it so we may or may not have had some gridiron coaches complaining about no audio on my uh, when they played on my host, so it got changed. So pretty much any time I play, I play in complete silence. How's going to keep? No, he's going to pitch it to Redmond. A good tackle there by one of the five-star safeties. I don't know which one that was. NDSU signed a pair of five-star safeties that they only signed five stars last year, which is very impressive. But on third and two now, I wouldn't be surprised to see a read option or some type of run here between Howe and Redmond. NDSU's got a pretty loaded box. It's actually going to be a play-action pass, and ball falls incomplete. Fourth and two, though. UCA could really think about going for this one, to be honest with you. Looks like they're going to check their kicker situation. And probably going to attempt the three points there. are going to go for him. What's up, Jet? And what a stop. 
NDSU runs it up the or sorry UCA runs it up the middle on fourth down, but NDSU is there for a huge huge stop. And they're going to take over about the 20 yard line. What a huge stop! And UCA UCA has already burned one of their fourth down attempts early in the game. Cooper's going to run it along the left side. going to pick up six yards. And I feel like this could be a game where we see a lot, lot of running. And, yeah, Mason, I'm going to have to agree with you, buddy. Anytime you want to run the ball on short yardage, you don't go pistol because that's just giving you three extra yards you're going to have to pick up just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Cooper's going to run right this time. Only going to pick up a yard. Very manageable third down coming in now for NDSU. Third and three, unbalance, unblitz, going in motion. We got play action pass. Cooper throw, or sorry, Shelton throws incomplete. Had a man wide open, and just air melted. it. Now in this, he's gonna have to punt this ball away again on their second possession, where they go three and out. Not the ideal start offensively for NDSU. UCA going to go with 11 personnel, sorry, 10 personnel, four wide receivers on the field. We're going to start at their 23-yard line. We're going to hand off to Redmond up the middle. He had a guy waiting for him, made a great cut back to the A-gap. His sixth carry of the day, 33 yards so far. Now second and two, and I expect UCA. They said it in the pregame interview, they want to feed Redmond. I don't know why they would get away from that. There it is again, Redmond, number 20 for NDSU. Met him in the backfield. Redmond's just too quick, a little too shifty, cut inside. Redmond going to get on the counter play this time. A beautiful run up the middle, 10-yard gain. And another first down for UCA. Yeah, Wenzel was starting to scare me. You could just see that burst of speed he had as soon as he got the ball. I didn't like it, to be honest with you. Thank God my offense got cooking a little bit. 
The biggest thing is uh, I don't know who that is. Is that Redmond? No, it's Simmons. 26 yard reception on just a simple slant pattern over the middle. Catch Ryan. I think that was about 20 yards after catch. Sneak, I'll talk to you uh, after this uh, quarter break. Redmond going to keep it up the middle again, picking up five. No, that's Simmons. Okay, number four is Simmons. Got it. Um, sneak, the difference in our game compared to us previously is our blitzes actually got to you this week. Last couple of weeks, every time we've brought a blitz, I don't think – outside of like the first drive of the game against UCO, when we would blitz, we would never get there. This week we actually got there. So that's really the only reason we were so good defensively. I think a quarter blitz, Hal picks it up, takes off running, bulldozes – one defender, but brought down by the corner. Seven-yard rush for Parker Howell. And UCA is now inside the red zone. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. Two backs in the back. It's going to be a handoff to Redmond up the middle. He's going to pick up one yard. NDSU has tightened down once they get to the red zone the last two drives. They had a stop on fourth down last time. I'd be curious to see if UCA elects to go for it again or if they just take the points. I'd almost expect this to be some type of – okay, until they audible. Here's a two-by-two two look. I would expect them to pass. It's going to be a pass anyway. Hal runs straight into the D lineman. At least he was able to save a little yardage there. Instead of a loss of about four or five, made it a loss of two because he was definitely going down. Had a man. It looks like he had a, may have had a man open on the corner route or the out route at the goal line. What is the running back that's out for the year? Is he a junior or a sophomore? Third and 11, 10 personnel. Simmons, angle route, almost intercepted. Keyboard space credited with the uh, hurry there, QB hurry. And, okay, I thought they were going to go for it again. Surely not on fourth and 11. They will like to punt this one. Uh, what year is that running back that's out for the year? Finney going to go in motion. North Dakota State taking over about the 20-yard line, down three. Mark Shelton's ball falls incomplete on pass over the middle. Got you. So you'll have a sophomore, a junior, and a junior next year. Cooper going to run up the middle, stumbling his way 11 yards for a first down in DSU. I think that's their first first down of the day. It comes in the second quarter. Play 
play action on the jet sweep. It's going to be an easy pitch and catch to Malik Anderson out of the backfield. It's, they faked the jet to Anderson and threw it to him as he wheeled up the field. Able to pick up eight yards with a mean stiff arm. Now second and two, ideal situation for NDSU. Definitely two down territory. Nice little screenplay there by NDSU. And a broken tackle is going to get Cooper the first down. UCA was bringing the blitz. They had a man there to get Cooper as soon as he caught the ball. Luckily, just a broken tackle animation before stumbling down. It's going to give him the first. Cooper getting it on the counter to the left. Going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage again, so no game for NDSU. Second and ten coming up. Still haven't seen Mark Shelton complete just too, too many passes. I honestly don't know if he's completed a pass outside of screens. Umblitz in the backfield. Shelton back to pass. Throws over the middle. This time it's caught. It's it could be gone. He's tackled inside the 15. Law Ramsey, the five-star freshman. 42 yards. A huge gain there for NDSU. A beautiful ball by Shelton. I really wish we had we need to make depth charts with numbers so that I know who's who. I also wish we had some dedicated commentators that were not coaches, and that's all they could do. It'll come, though. Finney Anderson to Ramsey to the right, west to the left, but he's going to be a handoff to Cooper up the middle. He's going to be brought down after picking up three yards. And NDSU, I'd like to see them chew some clock here before the half. UCA is going to get the ball to start the second half. You don't want to give them too much time and let them score. Don't want to allow them to double dip. A halfback toss to the left side, Cooper. Not a lot of blocking over there. Is going to be able to gain a yard. So third and six coming up. Looks like NDSU is going to go back to the shotgun. Zero personnel. Five wide receivers on the field. Cooper averaging nine and a half, two and a half yards per carry on his nine attempts. It's looking like a cover two man look for UCA. And uh, I think that was a QB counter. I guess he just wanted to take a, take the points, uh, not risk an interception. I like the call there, play a little conservative just to try to go into halftime a tie game. However, UCA probably should call it. Well, I would have probably called a timeout after that. It gives yourself about 30 more seconds to work with. Surely NDSU won't kick it, right? Let that clock run down, Kernsey. Why? Why? Am I crazy? Or did Kearns maybe just not think about that?
All right, you see he's going to take over at the 25-yard line. How? Play action. Going to take off running up the middle. Got a lane. They're going to be stood up about the 33-yard line. So second two now. Clock does tick. You see he has two timeouts. They got 10 personnel on the field for their two-minute drill. And uh, again, Redmond breaking a tackle in the backfield, stumbling his way for a first down. 11 carries already, 52 yards on the ground. Simmons had a nice 26 yard gain earlier. And this time, Hal tries to hit it to Redmond out of the backfield. Ball will fall incomplete, so clock will stop with 49 seconds to play before the half. Making a motion out of the backfield. How going to be a long set? Five wide receiver look with the motion. How throwing middle touch? Oh my God! He had a touchdown. And he dropped it. Oh, that's going to hurt Bucky and Pete for the rest of the night. That man torched the cover two defense. How throws a dot in a bucket between the hash and the sideline. On a rope. And the ball falls incomplete. Off the hands of the receiver. And now, instead of a, being up seven with 40 to play before the half, you were looking at a third and ten tie game. Luckily, Isaiah Murphy is going to bail you out a little bit. 15-yard gain. Change is going to move just a little bit. I can't believe he dropped that. Now going to throw this one out of bounds. Two for seven, 41 yards. So you say a is in plus territory. There's 38 seconds to play. Still two timeouts. You've only got one more fourth down attempt that you can use. And another dot to Isaiah Murphy on the sideline. A beautiful pass by Parker Howell. I can maybe see them going. I was going to say a read option at some point just to keep them honest. Howell throws that one. Way over his running back's head on the swing to the left. Falls incomplete. Does stop the clock. You've still got two timeouts, as mentioned previously. All these incompletions seem to be coming on first down. going to throw over the middle at CJ McDonald the fourth eight yard reception and now UCA is going to burn that second time out Al has three completions this drive a would have been touchdown dropped and I say would have been touchdown he may have got sucked up if he called it in stride I think he may have went but regardless Yeah, that coach participated in uh, pregame warm-ups, some bear crawls, uh, things of that nature, so he had to make sure he uh, didn't leave with any turf burn. Now third and two, though. It's a huge opportunity for NDSU to get a stop. It's a play-action pass. How taking off to Ryan, brought down. And now UCA, this would be their final fourth down attempt of the game unless trailing in the fourth quarter. And it looks like they are going to line up for a 43-yard attempt. Kick is up. Kick 
is good. So UCA will take a six to three lead with 14 seconds to play before the half. Now would be a great time for that first kickoff return touchdown for NDSU. If I'm NDSU, I'm taking one shot, trying to get it as far downfield as I can, call a timeout, and then take another shot to the end zone. But we'll see what Kearns elects to do here. going to run it with Mark Shelton. I think he was going to break that tackle, but luckily UCA had a couple more defenders coming to his aid, 6-3 to three at the half. And we're going to go to uh, – we'll go to UCA first. All right. You uh, – Bucky, Pete, you were able to escape uh, with at least a couple points before – the half you had a would have been touchdown dropped uh what does it say about your team to show composure and still come away with points there even after the big drop touchdown well i mean right there we're obviously disappointed that i think that was redmond on the wheel that couldn't get a touchdown there but i mean we we knew that we needed points going into the half and we, we needed it a lot going into the, why is kernsey playing the game to he's be playing fair, the game on the stream None of y'all paused it, so... Okay, okay. Nismo, please pause the game. Okay, well... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, um... Well, I, well, as I was saying, I mean... We, he drops that touchdown pass, but we knew that we needed points going into the second half so we could have a little bit of lead and we get the ball to start the second half. So, you know, we just had to um keep that mindset and we drove down the field and we, we got stopped short on that third and two as a pass play, but Parker ran it. But we, had, we were in field goal range... Take our three, take a three-point lead, and then go into the second half, hopefully get a touchdown and go from there. Yeah. Pete, any adjustments that we can look forward to in the second half? I mean, he's really when he's thrown, he's had a lot of time to throw. Uh, we're going to bring a bit more pressure, try to get him out of his comfort zone. Uh, but, I mean, defense has been solid, only three points allowed. And, I mean, this isn't a crazy offense, but still pretty good. Um but, you know, we're, we're going to look to get more pressure on him so that way he doesn't have all, all day to make every read he wants. All righty. Well, best of luck to you guys. I'm going to go talk to Kernsey for just a second, and then you are free to start. All right. See you, Gage. All right, Coach Kernsey. Uh, how would you evaluate your team's performance in the first half? Uh, still have offensive issues, obviously. Uh, defense is playing just fine. Uh, we're going to have to see what we can do to uh, get some momentum on our side in the second half. Gotcha. And final question for you. Um, I noticed you kicked that field goal with about 20 seconds left on the play clock. Was that kind of your intention, or did you just really not pay attention to it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not too worried about that really at this point. That's, uh, you know, I guess my mistake if you want to get right down to it. But 20 seconds, if that made the difference there, then – my bad. Gotcha, man. Well, best of luck. I'll talk to you after the game. Yeah, man. All righty. Uh, so UCA is going to take over after a huge return there to start the second half at about the 50-yard line. pressure there by NDSU and uh, UCA is out with a bullet 
Is that rough in the passer? Holding. So after what would have been a good first down, instead, you're looking at a first and 20. That may be the first holding call in RFCL history. I don't think I've seen one. First and 20, they're going to head off to Redmond up the middle. NDSU was almost a step too late from Redmond picking up about 10 or a lot more. But now UCA is going to be stuck with a second and 16. It's going to keep up front. I don't know why he went right. Why did he turn right when he could have just continued going straight? We got 69 overall players exiting the game. And now third and 15 coming up. Wow, what a ball. Uh, Mason, I use aggressive blocking as well, and I don't think I've got one in any game that I've played. Even like that, that goes back to Tulsa. I had aggressive blocking on as well, and I don't think I may have gotten one. Maybe I'm just lucky. Nice punt there. NDSU going to catch it, and a fair catch at the 15 yard line. First and 10 from the 14. Shelton back to pass. We haven't seen Vince Young the third yet here today. Oh, what a good ball. <laughs> yeah, Kersey did not seem happy at all, did he? And I mean at all. But that's part of it, I guess. Just gotta take the blows as they come. Shelton gonna throw short this time. So third and one, what does NDSU like to do here? They are going to QB sneak it and pick up the first down. Shelton going to throw out of bounds this time. Shelton just can't seem to quite get it going, passing the ball. Mm -hmm. 
Second and ten now. Seems like we have been here forever and haven't moved much. We got a top trips look to the right. Finney gonna go in motion. Under pressure, Shelton's gonna throw short. Malik Anderson gonna pick up eight yards on the reception. Now another third and short for NDSU. Third and two. We're going to throw short, and we're going to throw incomplete again. Mark Shelton, his fifth incompletion. It seems like every time he throws a completion, the next one is incomplete. I don't really know what's going on there, but that's just the nature of things. Fourth and two situation now. And NDSU is going to trust their defense with punting this one away. NDSU still has two fourth down attempts. But they're not going to use them here. A good punt almost out of bounds. You see he's going to take over about 38 yard line. Second and 11, only 230 yards. And a loss of one there by Redmond. It is averaging about four yards per carry. Ten personnel now trips to the field side. Redmond, long set back and stay in the block. How going to throw right? Caught. Isaiah Murphy again, his third or fourth reception of the day. I think each time they have been, yeah, about 15 yards, exactly that. A great ball there by Parker Howell. I think pretty much every game this week has been very low scoring. Simmons going to keep it up the middle. Redmond, I'm sorry. Redmond, number nine. Simmons, number four. Redmond's going to pick up ten. Now, second inches. UConn beat Miami, Ohio, 21-15 to 15 on Monday. Coastal beat Upper Iowa, 17-9. App State beat Georgetown, 7-3. to three. So, we haven't even seen 100 points scored total this week. We've had three different games. Four counting this one. Five wide look for UCA going to be coming out. How 
Now back to pass, throwing left, throwing short to Murphy. His least reception of the day. Picking up three yards. Time dwindles down in the third quarter. Powell going to throw. Oh, that beautiful ball. That Can we talk about that burst of speed that dude just got? Am I crazy? Or did that man, I feel like he just took off. What the hell was that? Okay, why did you see his helmet? There it is. Yeah, what the hell? Like, I feel like that man was scooting. <laughs> Holy hell. That dude was moving. Oh, my God. UCA going to take a 13 to 3 lead. I'm not crazy, right? Like, that dude was moving. Like, faster than I've seen anybody ever run in coach mode. NDSU going to take over down 10 at the 22-yard line. It's like he got a boost to go catch it, and then the boost just never ran out until he was in the end zone. A good ball there by Mark Shelton over the middle to find uh, Valame West. 15-yard gain, NDSU going with a hurry-up offense. A great ball there by Shelton. He could be going, oh, his receiver ran downfield instead of coming back to block. And I'd almost bet, I'd almost guarantee you, this ball, should he throw it, will be a bad ball incomplete. I've got a theory. I told you. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh my god, NDSU. What a play. What is going on in this game? North Dakota State. Wow. Je hey, Jenny Kearns. Is, do we have a Miss Kearnsy in the chat? Wow. I cannot believe that play. And I can't believe that I called it. I said it's going to be a terrible pass. And it was. It was a very bad pass. Fortunately for NDSU, UCA drops it, and his receiver's just right place, right time, walks into the end zone. Wait, Mason, what did you say? I don't... Oh, 
I was going to keep this one on the read option. I'm going to pick up four. Clicking that instead of OBS. Anyway, guys, my theory is you can't go hurry up and pass three plays in a row. It doesn't work. On the third play, your quarterback just kind of dummies out and throws a terrible pass despite being, uh, you know, wide open or completing two beautiful balls the plays before. Like, you can't go hurry up three plays in a row and pass on all three. I don't, I don't even know if you can just pass on the third one in general. Something that I want some people to test out. I just want to see if it's broken. All right, we got trips to the boundary. Quads with the running back. How back to pass. Going to throw over the middle. It's caught. CJ McDonald with another reception. Now going to be third and five. By the way, guys, next week my plan is to start. Uh, obviously, I didn't get any sports book stuff out this week. Next week, I'm gonna do some uh, some different things as a whole, like maybe some player props, maybe some uh, weekly totals, like weekly points scored across all games, things of that nature, just to uh, mix things up a little bit. Also, friendly reminder, recruiting starts Monday. So make sure you're squared away and ready to go on that. The recruiting board is out there, and it is updated. NDSU going to take over at the 29-yard line after Umblance returns it for a yard. What in the hell is going on with these batted balls? Sneak, I will say, to my knowledge, there is not an alt that is a recruit this year. It is all legit first-time players. Good ball there by Shelton over the middle. And a uh, run after catch there by Ramsey. 25-yard average. Uh, the draft is probably not going to happen. Uh, me and Gerald are still weighing options on what to do with not enough recruits. There's, I think there's like 15, maybe 10 or 15 on the board. Um and obviously, you know, we got eight teams. Say hypothetically everyone uh, loses 12 guys. Well, that's 96 players. So we're still having 80 that we're going to have to replace. And finding a fair way to do that, you know. Holy hell. What an interception for UCA. And they're going to get the ball back. Oh, I'm, oh, well, you can't see the replay anyway. But... A great play there. Heads up play by the defensive lineman. Sorry. Yeah, 10 teams. I said 10, didn't I? No, I said 8. Um, regardless, that's still 120 people that have to be replaced. Um, so, finding a fair way to do that. You know, Blake wanted to do the points and stuff. And we – points are still going to be incorporated, but we've got to find other ways to – to do that as well just because there's going to be so many people that have to be replaced and if we don't find a way to 
evenly replace those guys, we're going to have, you know, it, you could have a situation where six teams have all 71 overall freshmen, and that's it. So, Walker Howe going to throw a dot to CJ McDonald on the sideline. Two taps, picks up, not the first down, going to be just short. Nah, trigger. That's that's not gonna happen. We're too. We if we were gonna not graduate a class, we would have had to start that last year. I formation fullback dive. UCA is gonna pick up the first down. I'd like to see UCA turn on two clock at this point in the field. This point in the game. What is this going to be? Face mask. It is. UCA is going to tackle an extra 15 yards. So NDSU's defense gets a huge stop. UCA takes over with great field position. After the turnover on or the, I don't even know if it was a batted interception or just a bad, you know, a dropped ball by Shelton. Throwing short over the middle, it's called. And a first down for CJ McDonald, 10 yards. I'd go hurry up offense if I'm UCA. Hurry up, punch it in, call it a day. Probably a read option here, that's almost too obvious. Murphy going to go in motion. We're going to see a play action pass. Ball caught. Touchdown. Isaiah Murphy. That man deserves it. He has played lots out. I think he's got probably half of Parker House completions. Yeah, again, Trigger. If we were going to do that, we would have had to start that last year because I feel like that's – not fair to guys that we lost last year. For instance, Zach Armstrong with Sneak. Now, obviously, they don't necessarily need it because they've got three of the top running backs in the league, but would have been nice to have. He would have been 90-plus overall this year. Grayson would have been around the 90 had I kept him. So, I like the idea. I just don't know about implementing it in year number two. Shelton's going to throw straight to the UCA defense. Ball should have been intercepted. Instead, it's just batted down. I guess UCA wants to have NDSU at least have a chance. Right, but we the only reason we don't have more recruits this year is because we've taken away that ability so that coaches can't stack teams and swap, you know, player swap and things like that. The only we could have more recruits as a beautiful run after catch there by Malik Anderson. One thing that we could do, Mason, we're not doing a draft. I've already said it. Um, what we could do is have coaches make recruits, and then um, do just a will spin for all of those recruits. Like put the ten teams on the board, straight down the list. Boom.
just have so coaches can make recruits, but they don't actually get recruited. They end up on a list on signing day. We just go down that list. We'll spin whoever it lands on. That's who gets them. But with that, and I'll, I'll probably propose this in the head coach chat after this game. With that, we would cap the um, the amount of people you could bring in at a certain amount. That amount, as Shelton's going to be sacked for a seven yard loss, um, it would be you know maybe like six guys total in the wheel spin if we have 45 or if we have 15 you can't have more than three or something like that just so because if we don't do that wheel spin and then have luck of the draw North Dakota State ends up with 18 of the guys you know what I mean so we'll find a way to regulate it but I will ask for all coaches feedback after this game I mean, yeah, trigger. I mean, I want those guys. I want gridiron guys to make recruits as well. But we've ping, we've ping them over and over, and they don't ever do it, or they already have things of that nature. So, fourth and twenty-one, last ditch effort for NDSU. We're going to throw deep, and it's caught Law Ramsey again, 28-yard reception. And that could be a sign of life for NDSU. That clock is dwindling down, though. Shelton, uh, I don't even know who that was going to. Has 200 yards on the day, though. Did that just say he had no interceptions? I guess that was a fumble earlier, credited as a fumble. Yeah, we're also getting rid of FCS. Uh, lots of changing around here, but it's changing for the good. Classic starting about the same time as Season 10. Lots more online stuff, as in tournaments and whatnot. As Shelton's going to throw that one way out of bounds. That ball is going to be incomplete. Bowerman with the deflection. Now fourth and ten. NDSU you got to have. You got to have ten total. Three points wouldn't hurt here, but Kersey's going to like to go ahead and try to get that touchdown out of the way. NDSU ran it the entire first quarter, and it just wasn't working for them. Sneak. They ran it a lot early. And another great ball on fourth down by Shelton. Alex Speck, 15 yards and a first down for NDSU. 58 seconds remain. Play action pass, Shelton. Looking over the middle, has Ramsey again. 11-yard reception. He could have – okay, he's not there yet. I was going to say he could be approaching that. Um, I think, Sneak, I think Ty is just as equivalent – or Shelton is just as good as the five-star. So – and a run up the middle. Pays off. No, for NDSU. I thought he snuck in. He did not – now, instead of calling a timeout, NDSU is going to let an extra eight seconds, nine, ten seconds chew off the clock just to get brought down for negative four yards. Now they're going to burn the timeout.
It's a third and goal from the five. 25 seconds to play in the game. Shelton back to pass. Throw into the running back. Uh, it's running back's feet. Had him open. So fourth and goal, this is the game. And it's going to be stopped short, and that's going to be it. UCA is going to walk away with a victory here. Good run there just to get them away from the end zone. Redmond, 15-yard final carry of the game. And that'll do it. UCA 20, North Dakota State. 10 not the look uh, either of these teams well not the look UCA North Dakota State wanted I can't do two things at once today but a great performance there by UCA we're going to go ahead and uh, hop in the interview with them <laughs> let's go baby W what a great performance out of you guys uh, I think honestly the score probably should have been a lot worse in your favor you had yeah. the drop touchdown you had the wild touchdown for North Dakota State uh, but Parker Howell 12 for 20 136 yards two touchdowns only one interception um, yeah, I think your team played great all around I believe so too I mean that that interception to a touchdown was the craziest thing I've ever seen in this game and of course it would happen to us but we still pulled out so we still pulled out the win 20 to 10 and now I'm commentating this game next game I am all UCO baby let's go whatever they, whatever they the Bronchos if they win we're in the there playoffs so we're, right. we're excited about that Pete next week you are playing App State who are currently mm -hmm. set at 4-0 uh, arguably one of the teams to beat this year, you know, UCO is still three and zero. UConn's four and zero. Georgetown's not bad. They lost to App or lost to App State seven to three this week. Uh, what's going to be the game plan going in next week? I mean, not really too sure yet. We've played against some wide and scrimmages. Obviously, we're not. Both of us aren't really giving our real looks to each other. But uh, I mean, obviously, we're going to try and stop Spearbeck. He is a animal. If I think if we can stop him, keep Sandy Bones. Uh, contain, uh, we'll be fine. Uh, we we've seen that if Spearback doesn't get going, that offense doesn't get going, and so uh, that that'll be our goal. It's to stop Spearback. Got you. Well, best of luck to you guys, uh, and we will talk, see you all next week. See you, Gage. Thank you, Coach Kernsey. Not a uh, not the performance you wanted tonight, obviously, but. Uh, I will say one note from last week. You know, last week we saw kind of a two QB system. This week we didn't see Vince Young the third at all. Uh, what's going to be the plan going forward, or is it something that you're still kind of evaluating? That's a good question. Right now, both quarterbacks suck, so I guess we might go with the young guy the rest of the way and just work him in and see what he can do because Shelton clearly can't hit the broad side of the barn anytime it's actually needed so he's done i'm tired of his shit 
All righty. Well, next week you have Coastal Carolina. Uh, I will say both of us have struggled this year. Uh, it's We play at 7 o'clock next Thursday. Do you think your coordinator is going to be back for that? I would imagine. I don't know for sure, but I uh, guess we'll see. Defense played well again, just had some silly stuff go on in the game. I don't know what the deal was with that one touchdown, but uh, shit happens with games, and I got one right back, so it kind of evened out. But uh, in the end, I just got beat by a better uh, bunch of coaches today. It does uh... – it doesn't help, you know, you, you be in a one-man show versus basically a full squad over there on UCA. They got extra eyes, extra ears, um, and maybe it showed. But uh, best of luck to you next week. I will see you on Thursday. Yeah, man. Take care. All right, and that's going to do it here from Arkansas, uh, UCO, Central Oklahoma, and Montana coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Hit the subscribe button. It'll be about 40 minutes before kickoff, so we got a little bit of time there. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you guys uh, in just a little bit.